Welcome back once again people, and today it's another heavy mech, it's the Cataphract, one of the earlier um, battle mechs to be added to this game. Although this isn't just any Cataphract, this is the Ilya Muromet's hero mech, the, well, the one of two uh, <laughs> hero mechs I own, the other being the Yanlo Wang. Uh, this is pretty much its standard build, it might be missing a small laser, it's two AC5s, AC10, two medium lasers, with plenty of ammo, goodness. Uh, mech comes standard with an XL engine, um, emphasizing the speed. Yeah, Cataphract is a mech that, oh man, when I was a noob in this game, I ran this mech so badly. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't build a mech to save my life at the time. Now the Cataphract, for that reason, I've had a little hate relationship, but that's not to say it isn't a good mech because it is. It's a very solid design. Um, you like Gauss? You get Gauss, you like Gauss, you get Gauss. It has dual, you can put in dual Gauss, one in each arm. If you're crazy, you can squeeze in three with a bit of ammo, and you can probably one shot something. Um, there are jump jump jet variants that allow you to hop over and fire PPCs, there's like LB variants. That, it covers a vast range. I mean, the only thing I haven't seen people do with Cataphracts is like try and run any with any serious LRM build or. Uh, SRMs, uh, I think, due to the the location, the hard points not being big enough. But yeah, ballistics and energy, mainly ballistics, is what this mech is built around. Uh, traditionally, in BattleTech lore, it's a Capellan mech, uh, one of the more favoured of the um, of the Liao faction, and it's a pretty pretty decent heavy. Uh, it's actually one of the few 3050 mechs out there, in fact, I believe this was added prior to the clans arriving, so that creates some kind of weird uh, time event there uh, that really shouldn't be around. But the clans are here, so I guess you could say these are prototypes or whatever standing around, but prior to that, yeah. Um, I actually found that this AC5, dual AC5, AC10 build is pretty useful. Um, it's Decent rate of fire, good damage. I mean, hitting with all uh, three ACs pretty much gives you an AC20's worth of damage, but much greater rate of fire. Um, yeah, it has the mixed ammo situation, but honestly, I mean, the two AC5's give you that nice range punch, and the AC10 is a pretty good weapon for blowing off limbs or just taking out a, down, a very weakened mech. And I also apologise, also, this is one in um, thermal vision, but you, know, you can't play in this blizzard on the frozen city. Uh, so yeah, I apologise for that one if uh, basically the entire map is just shooting at grey shapes. Oh, the Vindicator! Yeah, he's trying to jump snipe in the Vindicator. I don't think he's uh, don't think he's heard the word. And it's not about the bird. No. Yeah, there he goes. That doesn't really help him much. However, uh, Timberwolves, yeah, they, they, they'll kick the crap out of you. Uh, so, Cataphract, reason to take one. As I mentioned, great ballistics. Uh, you can AC-20s, AC-5s, AC-2s, LBs, the whole lot. I mean, machine guns go mad. Um, not so much on the energy side, although I have seen a couple of dual PPC builds out there which are perfectly viable. Its downsides, uh, very low slung arms. Um, suffers from all the standard clan mech issues, and that is you got to expose a lot of the mech uh, to take those shots with the ACs. Uh, if you don't, you're pretty much going to get killed. Um, just hiding in a ditch, hoping something pops over to get shot by it, it's not going to happen. You need to play the cataract sort of aggressively. Um, even in a snipe, sniping role, you have to be able to move uh, quickly to a new position, get the shot, and then reposition again. Uh, it... At one point, I think it had a particularly large head box, but that's since been fixed, although uh, the head does kind of form a large section of the centre torso, so if you can see that, you're pretty much guaranteed the CT hit. And yeah, it's got very, very big uh, torso hit boxes, so you have to be aware of that when you're trying to move. It's one upside is that it does have pretty decent speed, so you can light the Thunderbolt and a couple of other heavies, you can quickly move around and use the terrain to shield you from certain attacks. Uh, but it can work in a brawler and a sniping build um, just as well, doesn't really matter um, what your 
preferences, it will be a solid performer in whatever uh, of those two you decide. It's definitely not a support mech though, uh, so don't try and run it as such. Uh, you, you always want to be trying to brawl or snipe one or the other. Uh, yeah, the jump jet variants are quite popular, uh, but you do sacrifice some of the, obviously some of your weight for ammo and weapons for those jump jets. <clears throat> Oh wow, nearly at the end of the video, I forgot how short this um, <laughs> this round was. Uh, first round out. Yeah, um, Cataract's a great mech. Um, solid performer, definitely one of those ones that you should have a go of, if you haven't already. Um, it's great for those of you who like to snipe stuff, it's great for those of you who just like Daka. Um, not much to worry about in the area of heat, unless you're trying to run some kind of dual AC-20 build. I think might be possible, but I wouldn't recommend it with this mech. The lower slung arms make the dual AC-20s uh, inefficient. Um, it's good for competitive game, uh, for get good for competitive matches. Sorry. Um, yeah. Downside: low slung arms, uh, big CT. So just be aware of that. Uh, but yeah, that's that round over. I can't remember. I think I might have got two kills and all that. Let's see. Uh, oh, three kills. So you know, I'm I'm getting better slowly but surely. Ooh, good XP. Anyway, thanks again for watching and uh, stick around for the uh, next in my video series. It'll be coming soon.